Hi everyone, it's Jon Ludwig Hammer, and I'm here with a lesson on how to break down closed positions. And I'm going to show a game I played in the Norwegian Championship. With the white pieces, my opponent was Sebastian Mihailov, one of the uh, up and coming youngsters uh, from Norway, also a member of my Norway Gnomes team in the Pro Chess League. Uh, I had the black pieces, and I chose to close down the position here with the move f4. Uh, and after g4, it's very unclear how any player is going to break through. Uh, what is needed is patience and a good plan. I decided that these rooks on the open file had to be exchanged off sooner or later. So we go for the exchanges. And what are we going to say about this position? I think there's two very important points. Number one, the pawn on d4 is a long-term weakness. This is a target black wants to attack and that white has some difficulty defending. Another important detail is the pawn on f4 which is controlling two of the squares that the knight on f1 would like to use. This knight only has four squares available. It can go to h2, to d2, and to b1. But anytime it wants to go further forward, it's being blocked by the black pawns. The pawn on f4 taking away two important squares, and the pawn on d5 taking away important squares if the knight was to move uh, to d2 and try to go forward. So what's next? We need to come up with a plan. So I've already highlighted that white's main weakness is the pawn on d4. It cannot be defended by any other of white's pawns. So it needs to be defended by pieces. Here's the objective. We need as many pieces as possible to put pressure on this pawn. So we need to come up with a plan. Let's see what I did. So far, I haven't put a single piece towards the pawn on d4, but it's coming. First, the knight on c6 puts pressure. Now I'm maneuvering my other knight uh, to f8, but where it really wants to go is the e6 square from where it attacks the pawn on d4. What about the bishop? Oh, it definitely wants to join the party. Look at this, bishop d8 and then bishop f6, pointing in towards the weakness. At this point, white has put all the pieces he can to the defense of the pawn. Now he tries to counterattack towards my pawn on d5, uh, but I'm just staying put with my strategy of maneuvering. Moving the bishop back, next, I'm going to move uh, the, the queen back so that the knight can get the e6 square. My opponent understood what was going on, and he got into panic. He decided to go queen e2, trying to get a queen exchange, uh, but also giving away the queen's protection of the pawn on d4. I could have taken that pawn, takes back, done the exchange of queens, and by that, winning a pawn. But actually, this position would be very good for white, who has a counter threat against the pawn in the center, and also has a very active king about to contribute in this endgame. So I chose to keep the position closed. I chose to take the queen, but then go into defense with my knight, protecting the pawn on d5, realizing that this pawn is the key to my strategy 
because it's preventing the knight on d2 from entering the game by controlling the e4 and c4 squares. After king d3, knight e6, my opponent played a panic move, which was actually his best chance. He sacrificed his knight on d5, giving away a knight for just a pawn, but it's the most important pawn in the position. If he didn't go crazy, if he just calmly played his knight back, having no plan for improvement, I would gradually put my pieces in better squares, use my king to protect my pawn, use my bishop and my knight to go after the guy on d4, and as the final straw, the, the second knight would attack the pawn as well, um, overpowering white's defenses. So knight takes d5 was actually the best try in the position, but it's still a bad situation to be in. Now I have a knight for just a pawn, and white's only chances lie in the whether or not he manages to push his passed pawns up the board. After knight c4, going after the pawn on a5, I blocked the bishop's influence, so that I can finally capture the d4 pawn, which was my objective this entire time. He took my guy, I took his guy. He still has a passed pawn, but I'm able to use my pieces as blockaders, making sure that this pawn does not go beyond uh, the c7 square, where I have many, many guys protecting. White tried to uh, use the king uh, as an attacking piece, helping out with this plan, but I had a good strategy. Bishop d4, once again using this square, telling White that I wouldn't mind an exchange of bishops, because if you trade, take back, yeah, you might get a new queen, but on the other hand, I'm a piece up. So I'm just going to give up my knight for that queen, and then I'll have passed pawns to decide the game on the other side of the board. White avoided the trade. I went back and forth to win some time before deciding to go bishop c3, completely uh, trapping this bishop on c1. And after I brought my knight into the game, capturing the pawn on uh, f3, there was one final trap. He goes knight c6, trying to exchange off my knight, the only protector that prevents the pawn from becoming a new queen. But I had it covered. Knight e5 attacks the king, attacks the knight, forcing the trade, uh, after which Black has a uh, easily winning endgame, and therefore my opponent resigned. I'm very happy with this game. I think it showcases the importance of restricting your opponent's pieces and, and also how important it is to have a long-term plan and how easy it can look when you complete your plan. Uh, if you're interested in more video content, check down below.